Nice meeting you. Hi, good morning. Nice to meet you, James. I'm um, Nadia with Big Old Belt, and I'm here with James Picard, who's the great uh, grandson um, of Agatha Christie. And I guess you probably had a major part in this movie. Can you tell us how the murder mystery ensemble, based on your great grandmother's uh, Halloween party novel, um, it introduced like new characters and it changed a couple concepts, like taking the film to Italy instead of England. Um, how did these changes kind of come about and what was your part in this? So, I mean, as you are aware, we, we have made two previous movies in Murder on the Orient Express and <clears throat> Death on the Nile, both of which were written by Michael Green. And Michael talked to me a while ago about maybe doing something with Halloween Party. And at first I wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do or perhaps even why he wanted to do it. Um, two or three years ago, I think, um, I had a meeting with Michael and Ken Branner and Steve Asbell from 20th Century. And Michael kind of explained his reasoning, which was essentially that he felt having made two pretty straight adaptations of big famous books, which also have previous adaptations, he wanted to do something a little bit more surprising. And that was partially to do a story that was less well known, but also to do something very different tonally. And there is an element of this film that is that is horror, that is suspense. And that sort of permeates the murder mystery. It is still a murder mystery at its heart. Um, but Michael has done something different and Ken has brought something else to the production, um, which makes it more than just a murder mystery. And I think that will surprise audiences, which was sort of the plan. Um, but I hope it will delight them as well. Yeah, it was very surprising. I like how it was kind of like, I guess like up to interpretation. And it, it did a great job of like balancing both like the horror elements and the murder mystery. So I just want to say congrats on that. Um, you. Can you tell us what inspired you to enter the world of films? Well, um, I mean, as, as I'm sure you're aware, my, I mean, Agatha Christie was my great grandmother. So um, there's a kind of link in there. I actually spent most of my career um, before doing this job in publishing. So I come at it much more from the book angle, from the film and TV um, but the thing about film and TV and particularly Hollywood film is that it is a way of reaching an audience that no other medium can. It gives you a range, it gives you a scope, it gives you a global element. And that feeds into everything else we do. So off the back of these films, more people are introduced to, to the books, more people buy the books and more people watch other things and we get to make other things. So it is both a, a purpose in itself, but it also spreads the word of Agatha Christie, which is... I guess my role. And I guess how important was it to you like to keep the legacy alive, but also um, I guess being a producer, like how involved were you with the writing on the project? Um, I I believe that in part of my role is is to pick the right partners and then trust them to get on with it. So um, you know, I am here if anyone needs me. I hope people um real I mean see that I sort of stay out of the way as much as possible. Um, but really, um, it's it's the other people who who make the magic happen. Um, we are incredibly lucky to have Michael Green as a scriptwriter who seems to be able to, in in the first draft, create something that's pretty much filmable. Um, working with Ken Branner is a privilege and basically just makes me feel inadequate. So, um, you know, I, in lots of ways, try and stay out of the way. But we are there. Um, and I think the fact we are there means that people don't do silly things. So uh, maybe our presence helps in that way. Um, but it is it's a balancing act of of making sure that people stay true to the work, but also have the freedom to express themselves and make something that works for a modern audience. And with your background predominantly um, in publishing, are there any other books that you would at some point like to make into a movie? I'd like to make them all into movies, so that's very simple. Um, look, I, I don't try and look too far ahead in, in things like this. Um, I hope that many people will enjoy this movie, um, watch this movie, and that being the case, I think we'll have an opportunity to make lots more movies, but let's do baby steps first, I think. Yeah, I had a great time with this. Now I want to go back and like read the books and like delve a little more into that because I think it, it did a great That's job. That's exactly <laughs> what we like happening. Yeah. <laughs> Cause um I feel like the like the genre of like whodunits is not necessarily like repetitive, but like this was like such a like a fun way to to see it. Like with with the horror aspects and the ghosts. Like I, I think they did an incredible job with that. 
Thank you. Well, that's credit to Michael and to Ken Brannan. <laughs> so I will pass on your thanks. <laughs> and then um, why Italy? Uh, I guess that really stuck out to me. It was beautifully done, the, the way they did the house and everything. Just was Italy always in, in, in mind when making the movie? Uh, I think it was always in Michael and Ken's minds. Um, I mean, I think, you know, if you're going to make a big Hollywood adaptation, you want a big backdrop. I actually think you could do a an English country house murder mystery in and of itself. But I think Venice does lend itself to something. I also think Venice lends itself to the whole atmosphere of the film, to the feeling of the supernatural, to the air of mystery. There's something about the way those canals wind through those streets that adds another layer, I think, to the mystery. It adds to the suspense. It adds to the to the horror element. So I think Venice was the perfect place to to put this film. Yeah, I guess what you just said, like it kind of added to the feeling of like being stuck, like there's no escape, there's no way out. And like, we're going to figure this out here. <laughs> I think, it, yeah, it's it's the, you know, the water has has something. The fact that the only escape is by boat as opposed to by car or, I mean, presumably you could get out by foot, but um, that whole atmosphere of Venice I think is is something else and is kind of an added character in the movie and thank you so much um for joining us James I really appreciate it I really enjoyed Pleasure. it nice meeting you thank you bye now bye. Uh...